G'day and welcome to The Early Crow, episode 48, brought to you by Makita. Uh, I can't remember the start of it now. Step up to the next generation of professional cordless power tools with Makita XGT 40 volt and 80 volt max. Right now, get your hands on some amazing bonuses when you purchase selected Makita XGT kits and combos. Limited time only, offer via online redemption. See makita.com.au for details. Makita XGT. More intelligent, more efficient, more power, more Makita. Boys, welcome. Pratty, great start. He tried he wanted to take the new ball and he just... Woo, left arm, slow mediums. p Rat, Roycey, how are you? Yeah, I'm better now that you did the ad read, mate. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Paps, how are you? How's the ankle? Everyone's asking. Yeah, it's good, mate. Um, train this week with the boys and uh, get the ticket of approval from the big fella and we're good to go. Uh, what price are we, Captain's Run, to see the uh, the skinny the skinny fade? That's a bit like, if you're at home, if you're wandering the streets of the eastern suburbs in Sydney and you want like the actual like tick of approval if the great man is going to suit up for the Sydney Swans in the qualifying final versus the Giants, you want to see the man just parading around with a big skin fade, a fresh one. Yeah, well, we do it on Thursday, so I might wait till Friday to really get it primed. Yeah, that's what um, I So you might not see it on uh, Thursday, but um, dollar one to be having on Friday. The Paps fade is actually a different thing, not to the skin fade. The Paps fade is the uh, what Ponce is going to do this week in the NRL, and I did this week in the NRL, and it worked. Two and one for me. Um, what a disgraceful year you've had in the NRL. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what happened. Like, seriously, like, look, look, do some like research and look at a few like tips here or there. Obviously, looking at the wrong stuff, and yeah, just uh, no good. But um. Yeah, on to the next one, and um, we move on from NRL 2024. Lucky I wasn't betting myself, because I'll be fucked. <laughs> um, all right, let's straighten up. Uh, it's finals in the footy. We had the week off. Um, some glorious some glorious shots from the Swans social media, Brady. A little bit of sort of propaganda, too, if you noticed. Front cover, who was it? <laughs> Our man, perhaps in, perhaps in the cross. Who would have Juzzy. Um also, an outstanding bucket hat operation with um, Dane Ramsey. Need one badly. Um, it looked like a bit of a crowd there at Lakeside, Tommy. Yeah, we had the open training session today. Uh, it was good to see a few fans down there. Um, a couple of school kids and stuff as well, so it was nice. It's always good to get the fans down there before finals. It's uh, no uh, Hawthorne or one of the big Melbourne team setups, but it was good to see a few fans down there supporting us before the big week. <laughs> Yeah, that's give me an idea, Pratty. If we're lucky enough, we might have to get there one day, maybe the end of this month. Uh, how was the vibe at that training? How are the boys? Are they humming? Yeah, it's good. It's um, it's a very exciting sort of time of the year. Um, coming into the week one of the qualifying final, so um, you'd be something wrong with it if you're not excited and ready to go. And um, yeah, it's just a good good feeling amongst the group as it should be. And um, the weather's turning. It just smells like uh, spring and and, and finals footy, it's good. Who's the chief like sort of vibe like lifters on a on a captain's run, sort of just a run around like I was today? Like, is it yourself? Uh, I'm thinking, Brady, have a guess too. I'm going to go. Brody Grundy would be sneaky, sort of rev them up. Lizard, Juzzy, and Paps. Yeah, I reckon you could potentially throw Chad in there as well, just with a big Cheshire grin running around, getting the vibes up as well, I reckon. So it's, a bit, it's a bit of a like fuck around today, a little run around, a little sort of recovery. But um, yeah, ju- it's usually Juzzy. Just to be honest, just fucking around, uh, just, just talking shit and yelling, and yeah, we just play some little games and stuff. But it's usually him. I sort of try to just hide away today, just prepare myself for tomorrow. Um, other games this week, boys. We've got the the cracker Friday night, the, the uh, doggies and the hawks at the G. Um, there's a good Hawthorne player who's not going to play. Will Day. Who's that? Will Day. Oh shit! Shoulder um, no good. Who do we Who do we like there and why? Um, I'm sticking with the doggies. I said it the other week. I think we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. I reckon the doggies with a bit of a finals experience. I reckon uh, the Hawks could turn it on and really put one on. But I just think 
Trelaw, Bont, Libba, all these blokes that have uh, that have played a bit of finals for you. I reckon they'll uh, class will prevail on that side, and the Hawks season might be done and dusted, and probably watch out twenty twenty five. I think uh, that all summer. Yeah, I think uh, there could be a bloke that takes if the doggies go far. There's another Buddy Franklin on our hands, I reckon, and uh, the doggies go far. Jamar Uber Hagen will be one of the main men that uh, take him far, and he's got a bit of a swag about him, bit of you know, look at me, bit of um, arrogance that we like to set our forward, full forward. And I think if the doggies to uh, to uh, really, if the doggies go really well, he's obviously going to play really well, and um, he's a very exciting player. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, Exciting game, I think. Whoever um, comes out on top is uh, going to be hard to beat the next week. So, it's exciting. Saw a uh, saw a TikTok with Razor Ray Chamberlain, and he's talking about the bud. <laughs> Ray used just to run it like you just walk out there, chest like right out, shoulders right, like just oscillating, all oiled, oiled up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick six today. Stuff he'd say, stuff like that. Is that sort of where it was at? <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, yeah, there's some good, there's some good, uh, good stories. He just, he just called the opposition shit. Usually, he's oh, fucking yeah, shit. This, this story, the, the opposition guys into him, into him at the start, and and Ray goes, he yelled out to me, he goes, Ray, Ray, and he goes, what man? He goes, I know who you are, but who the fuck's this bloke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he was pretty. Like, it was just, like, a, a basic shit talker, but, like, it didn't matter because he was just, like, him was just, like, oh, fuck, right, oh, like, obviously, you uh, can't say much to him, so, but it was nice when he was up and about, chest out, it was, uh, it was, yeah, pleasure to watch. I reckon when you roll back and, like, have a beer in, like, 15, 20 years, like, God, you'd be, like, what a memory to have played a lot of footy with him, eh? Oh, definitely. I think even now you look back on, fuck, like, he was just so good, like, um... Because I was like, what, 2016, I'll get there. So he's still like fucking mm. dominating. He still kicked 80 goals that year, I think. Um, even like just after like, in the last probably three years, he was not training much, but he'd still put put the team on his back and stand up when he needed to stand up. And um, yeah, definitely when when it all comes to end, you'll be telling your grandkids, your kids that I've played with Buddy Franklin. Actually played with Dusty as well in the Victorian game. So um, there, there's a couple of nice players that I've played with. Cool. Um, speaking of what like, big game players, he he is the biggest, the biggest big game player I ever seen. Michael Voss, he now coaches the Blues. He's got some like big boy decisions to potentially make as they go up to the Gabba to take on the Lions. There is just like a, an abundance of like stars. If it was FIFA, they're <laughs> like their health bar isn't a hundred percent back, but they're like. 88s yeah. and 93s their attack and shit. Is, is their attack is... Yeah, and what do you do? Like, oh, decision time. Got to get on the plane. How many first-class tickets have we got? What, what would you guys do? Perhaps we'll start with you. Like, do you just bring them all in, roll the dice? or oh, Every day of the week. It's, it, probably, got... it's probably a stupid question to three, three punters. <laughs> would you roll the dice? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I would. Yeah, it's different if they were like um, seventy-eight Raiders with a half health bar. Yeah, but when they're yeah, when they're when game they're, turners, when, yeah, like you're obviously going to play your, your your big boys. There's obviously Doherty as well. Like, geez, if he if he comes back and play, it'd be an amazing story. There's a lot of great stories building in the AFL finals, and we haven't even touched on Port, who hit the home final against the veteran mm. Cats. It shapes up to be a real cracker, and the consequences severe. Mm. Port win. They have another home prelim, all to play for. It's a long road if they lose. I think they have to go. They'd have a home game and then to Sydney either way, then to Melbourne. Who do we like there, Pratty? And why? You, oh, the exhale. We've got, got the exhale out of the great many, many, many times. I think. Uh, yeah, I reckon it's going to be a cracking game of footy. Is it? Guaranteed that Geelong's going to have their full strength side as well. I'm not 100% sure that it is. No. Um, I think you've got to take Port at home. I, I think they've, they've got, they're playing good footy. They've got their full side in and they're playing at that mecca of a stadium, perhaps, which I think you said before is like one, mm. of the, uh, one of the tougher places to play footy. I think they've got a massive edge there. Um, 
I'd be baffled with how well they've played in the last five weeks if they don't get the job done. But it's Geelong. It's Chris Scott. It's yeah. the big game players. You just like baby Yui and, <clears throat> and all these blokes, you just you just never know. But you gotta take Port at home, I think. It's um it's gonna be it's gonna be a great final series series. It's um like the season as you to be honest, you don't like anyone that does predictions and think obviously you've got to have an opinion, but like Jeez, he couldn't be confident with a selection. I don't think. Mm. Like it's yep. um, it's a very open eight. Let's tell you that much. All right, that's AFL. It shapes up to be an absolutely enormous kickoff to the finals this week, and kicking off Thursday, which coincidentally will be the captain's run. So potentially, perhaps won't get the skinny till uh, Friday. So you get no mail there, but we will be back on Thursday to go through the ponies, the rugby league, and probably the golf with a sprinkling of pigskin. Good eye. NFL. So, the real question uh, with the captain's run, perhaps is he going to throw your, your little side mm. golf bet into your actual selections this week, or are we going to just leave it off to the side and just let the punters have a $4 fill-up and not take it for the the, uh, the golf tipping yourself? Oh, I'm just unselfish, mate. All for the listeners, you know. Uh, you know just all it. for listeners. Yeah, love it. Just, hey, people underrate how many assists the man gives off, and a lot of them on his non-preferred. Don't forget that. <laughs> unselfish, but flary. Um, Captain's run was enormous too, boys. Well done. Dominated last week without me. Full credit to you both. And full credit to uh, Pratty and the Dim Sim King. Happy Father's Day. To you both and all the all the fathers out you there. Too, mate. Thank you, you too, Pretty mate. Thank you. Doubt on track to be one of the great old mans of all time. Already look like one. <laughs> haven't yet completely converted to behaving like one. Tells me he's still running. How long will that last? Uh, hopefully, it lasts a while. Was I'll be 135 kilos before you know it. Oh, that'll be good gear when we start to do a bit of uh, in-person stuff. Uh, NRL on the weekend. Kingsley Bartholomew wrapped it up. Uh, the early crow NRL comp three and zero. I think he went three and zero. Too good, too strong. Um, real prior to Jenny last prep sort of stuff. Set the pace. You thought maybe he's going to stop, and then he didn't, and he just kept on winning. And uh, he's won. There's a couple of us fighting out for that third spot potentially. I'd love to get on the podium in such a um, strong field. Pratty, I think part of that little contest. Mate, I need one more tip to be in the positive for the year and that will be fucking one of the greater feats of my life if I can go positive in the NRL considering I didn't know what the game was six months ago. But I know like whilst I want to finish on a high, um, I am focused this week on the, <laughs> the clash for the spoon. Um, perhaps three games clear but cold, cold as ice. Um, punts <laughs> essentially committed to just completely fading Tom. So if you're playing at home... Basically, Tom has the honour. Tom will go, I like these three games and these three teams and these three margins, uh, like handicaps. And uh, punts will just go, okay, I'll have the exact opposite for the chance to tie it up for last. I think, uh, any, any nerves at all, Tom, or just don't care? It's going to be an interesting uh, interesting sort of way I go about it. Like, do I sort of, you know, play a bit of like tactical, it's like, oh, I think these, this mob's actually going to, Lose. So do I go to the other team and punts goes on the other team and like you know what I mean? Um, you couldn't take the Broncos one side and the uh, and the Storm the other side and just make sure that you get one point, could you? Yeah, look, it's, you um, can't do that. It's not allowed. <laughs> not it's allowed. Uh, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, hopefully, I can come out on top in front of punts who has seriously given no effort to it at all. Hoping yeah, I know. That's more, the best. That's the best one, thing though. Like zero effort, effort to the NFL with you. This NFL, and but, uh, the yeah. real hero of the week though is Juzzy for going zero and three to let Punter go for three and zero to set this week up. So he's yeah. the real hero. Juzzy was tooting his own horn, and now he's equal uh, with well, me, J Mac. Well, well, he tried to. He was he was going for the win. He faded Kingsley. So like, yeah, right, smart it was, man. It was no guts, like, no glory. Yeah, so live, live or die by it. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, speaking of glory and, and just domination, he's had one of the best years all time. It's right up there with Tiger Woods. I think, like, there was a stat on 
There was a couple of things on, on Twitter or X this morning. Scotty Scheffler's won more golf tournaments this year than Max Verstappen's won Grand Prix. <laughs> like, where? He's won over half of the tournaments he's contested. Allegedly. Not 100% sure on that, but I think that's right. Tiger Woods has done that, like, say, seven times. But there's no one else. He joins Tiger. Um, absolutely rare air. He's, like, let's let's just, like, some of the this year stuff. Masters. Gold medal. FedEx. Arrested. Became a dad. Arrested. Like, one of the great years of all time, on many levels. It's crazy to think that somebody can be, if it is true that he's won half the amount of tournaments that he's played in. But that's four rounds of golf for half the amount of tournaments. Do you know how many tournaments it is? Is it like 20 tournaments or... No, nah, some... it's more than that. But he got arrested. He, one of them he lost, he was like near the yeah. lead and got arrested. Like And he was leading, yeah. yeah. He's a man of God. Like You know, like when you're out, you're out like on the circuit or you're out with the boys... And you know, a bit of like reality stuff, and you don't care. But there's that one bloke that's like really panicking because he's like he's a good, he's actually a good person. Is that he's, like a long? You know, he's like still scared of his, he's scared of his dad, and he he goes to church on a Sunday. That's Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, I know. So crazy. you can imagine how much like it will just rattle you to get arrested. And yeah, so I I give him that one off. So his percentages even come up. What a year! What a tournament! Um, Colin Morikawa just. Skirting the edges again. Cool. Great so round. Was, the one time I don't fucking back him, he wins. Shout out to Colin. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Um, anything else in the golf that took you guys uh, by surprise? Very proud of uh, Adam Scott, who yeah. finished the year real strong and sort of stamped himself. I've got no doubt I haven't confirmed it, but I'm sure he'd be you know, right in the mix now for everything he wants to play in next year. He was sort of on the cuff this year. He he had a couple of like sponsor exemptions towards the middle and back of this season. I, I doubt he needs them now after finishing. What was he tied fifth or something? Top four, mm-hmm. yeah, tied four. I think. Um, I think when Xander Shuffle chipped in at the end, it cost Adam Scott and Russell Henley six hundred and sixty-six thousand oh. dollars each. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking crooked. <laughs> what did Scotty Scheffler win? Fifteen. Oh, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, unbelievable that is nuts tough life um, oh it's just the greatest year like he was five back at the Olympics anyway um yeah good golf unbelievable time. unbelievable good shout golf out to time. Scotty Scheffler um what well, did Gano get some more winners did he Gano got Scheffler uh with the handicap start and top five for Adam Scott at like eight dollars so Jeez, that's he's, nice. he's he's about a Ninety dollars in front now. Yeah, it's not uh, Couldn't lose, could he? Of I reckon crop. he's home. Yeah, oh, he has to be home. There's no way he can lose now. He can't lose from here. This, uh, I wouldn't let's say he shouldn't. It is the golf. You can throw up a few all, long prize winners, but let's all moz him. He's a yeah, that's what I'm doing moral. here. I'm saying he's a moral. You get done. Get beat. It's just, like, it's just an absolute moral. Almost have to kick him out of the group if he gets beat from here. <laughs> um, that's golf. Uh, Chef were dominating. We keep betting, though. We'll find a tournament to play in next weekend. Again, probably on the captain's run. Don't miss it. Um, horses. Are we, we're going to go and start talking ponies, or is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, Charles good. Leclerc won the, um, won the Italian F1. Piastri, the Australian, who's red hot. The, the Mercedes. No, the McLaren, McLaren F1 team. Flying, is like, they? they are punching. They are flying. He uh, he did a little little cheeky move on um on his teammate um Lando Lando Norris, Norris. um on the on the opening lap. This week's episode is just taking me back to my video game days. It might have started with what we spoke about before we started, which we cannot repeat. But the FIFA bars, the health bars, and the talent bars. I love that track on on F one. Used to punch around there. Anyway, that was the F one. Let's go and talk ponies. Eyes on. Ponies brought to you by CTW Excavations. They'll go where the big boys don't. Find them on Instagram, CTW Excavations. Discounts for darts and dim sims. Boys, enormous. Like oh. everything we just spoke about was really fun and entertaining, and I consumed it all and I love it. But 
I don't. I don't even need the footy in my life right now. I, I'm, I'm going to take it. I love it. But the horses are like harming, and the good ones are coming back, and the ones that aren't back are trialing. And how grass are like Sunday night? Like it's Wednesday. You start looking at the meeting and going, "Oh, is this weather going to suit this horse? What's the track going to be?" And oh, I like this. Watching replays. Watching replays. You consume it and bet it all Saturday. And then you can't wait on Sunday when you wake up for the data to roll through and go, well, where's Stormboy line up versus Growing Empire? Mm. And then you're just scrolling through. And everyone listening to this podcast should be scrolling through and actually letting us know, where is Stormboy going? Oh, please don't say cool more because yeah, we're all on don't. Growing Empire at a fat price. Yeah. yeah. I, I, he was saying something. He said something today. He said potentially even on a Cox Plate path. Oh, Christ. Like he said, there's the world's its oyster. He said, and he said, um, what else did he say? Yeah. Did you listen this morning, Paddy? No, he said, I didn't Cor- he, he said potentially Caulfield Guineas into Cox Plate, classic three year old prep for, for a superstar. So they get an yeah. Animo did it. Um, a lot of them try and do it, it's very hard to do. Animo should have won. Um, not many three-year-olds win, but they run big races. Um, Castel Vecchio might have been one that ran well in the Winx era. Um, Seamus Award as a three-year-old with Chad, son of Glyn Schofield, won the Cox Plate as a maiden. What? Yeah. I backed it. Me and Punts backed it. We oh, backed wow. it in Happy Trails, like $21 it was. I still remember it. That's nice. At the Botany Bay in um, Erskineville. I'd be, I'd be very, very surprised if it goes to the Coolmore Storm Boy. It ran a pretty good number, though, on Saturday. Like, yeah, bigger, but like, where's it, that line that up not... with the Everest? Needs to find. But would, yeah, wouldn't but, you but say that number like... was bigger than you thought? When, like, when you watched it, you thought, they kind of gifted him the race, he's, and he's mm. kicked away. But that number was bigger, oh, I thought. Oh, that number was... Yeah, it was... It was nice, but yeah, uh, because if they go to Golden Eagle, and then freshen up for the Everest. Golden Rose, Golden, Golden Rose. Rose, sorry, so Golden Rose. All sorry. these, th- all the good three-year-old colts will go to the Golden Rose, which is a Group One over fourteen hundred meters for the three-year-olds at Rose Hill. Um, and it's sort of that race sort of says spring is here. Mm. Now, some horses will go from that to the Caulfield Guineas. Some horses go from that and drop back in troop if they didn't get the fourteen hundred. Yeah, it's um, it's fascinating. What what? It's just a it, like, including myself. I was like, geez, you think watch trials and you're like, fuck. But it just goes to show, like trials on everything, mm. and just comes out and brains them just to the front. Like was was still half slow away. Like if it does get a few uh. Like in, so it does go to a Everest or something, and he's half slow away from a wider draw. Is it going to be as good not leading and things like that? Like it wasn't as mm. good. Um, like it's two best best figures of when it's bowling out in front, Magic Millions and um, and the one on the weekend. So it's um, it's exciting. It's good. Gatsby, I loved how it was, it was a flop. How it was rev paps. Yeah, like yeah. They yeah. don't normally get scrubbed and do that. Mm. It's it's. It's interesting though, like jockeys as well, like Hippo back on. Like sometimes I know J Max the best in the world, but like sometimes like Hippo might just might just like him. You know what I mean? Same mm. with uh, Jamie Carr and other Will. I think that's what is it five from six when she's ridden it, and it was mm. ridden. Uh, wasn't much gusto out of the gate there, and still absolutely kicked their heads in. Mm. But um, and was like, like, sounds like for the Golden arrogant. Rose. Sounds like for Stormboy for the Golden Rose, we're just praying that he gets fourteen hundred and they keep going up in distance. And they'll be praying that Growing Empire doesn't go there. Um, how how like excited Pop. were you, Thomas, when at about the four hundred and fifty marks, Zara said, "Listen, listen, I'm going to give you just a cheeky little leather. <laughs> yeah, I'm little just going to hold boy. on. I want you just to put it away, and then we're going to sh- just just throttle you down." <laughs> it was actually extraordinary how far he put it back. Like, it was like I'm not showing anyone how much. It, it was it was almost like he's like I'm not showing the punters what this what the figure was going to be. I'm just going to go and mm. you can all guess. Mm. <laughs> it's like uh, spinning your car up in a forty zone. They're going fuck. I'm in a forty zone. I'm doing sixty. I better slow down here. And the um quote quote him. He goes, if it was ever going to get beat this prep, it was today, and it's done that. Yeah. That's what he said after the race. 
So well, yeah. he's confident. Um, like he's are it. But uh, yeah, it was nice to uh, find it off the trials, and it was good. Well, let's be honest. Like you're on track for one of the great futures bets of all time. Mm. Uh, Twenty dollars plus is gravy, as far as I'm concerned. You get set a good horse at that price. I'm impressed. I'm very happy, and I followed you, and I thank you. And so are my kids. If it wins to Coolmore, um, <laughs> DK. Pratty, for those who aren't on, uh, I'm just going to get the price now. I'm sure it was five dollars. Is that yeah. still? No, it's ta- not. Take that your is... take no, no. your uh, hat off. No, it's not worth it. No, shoulder arms. Yep. Wait it, for the it, day. Because he's um. What is what is the market there now, Paddy? So Coolmore prices as of about nine o'clock on Monday, the second of September. You've got Growing Empire five bucks. Stormboy six bucks, Gatsby nine dollars, which is actually firm from the weekend as well, which is interesting. Uh, Lady of Camelot nine, Coleman eleven, Traffic Warden eleven, and then long with the rest. Yeah, overs. <laughs> yeah, I still think five bucks is a reasonable price. I wouldn't be wouldn't be. Yeah, you got to compare it going to chips in. But what price do you think it starts? If it wins again like it did, three fifty four dollars. It probably won't start. Two only just because of the, what the field usually produces, and if there's one that runs good in the Everest and comes back, I think that can potentially keep it in the market. But I reckon it starts three three fifty. What price is Wonder Boy? Wonder Boy is eleven dollars. <sighs> They'll be going guineas, eh? I don't know. I don't know. Like, they back that, that horse was eight fifty to five dollars the last thirty minutes of betting on Saturday. Mm. Like fucking significant. The winner, Growing Empire, our horse yeah, that we own with Yulong. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Zhang. Um, it was two dollars and fifteen cents, basically across the boards. Thirty minutes out, jumped two eighty. So yeah. a significant drift. I think the market sort of thought barrier draw blinkers off. Stop. Um, um, like this isn't its grand final. Well, well, I think they were the, the sort of factors. The, the market really came to Wonderboy. There was good money early and, and it held, let's face the music, who was like, not a complete car crash because you could have probably driven your car out of the car crash if you needed to, but she didn't want to. <laughs> now, she was half crook, so we, we forgive her that. And also, like, it's hard to judge a jockey's decisions. Like, we're just sitting there betting we're not riding on also, 60 k's an hour. They're going 50, past, yeah, 56 k's past, an hour. Past events, like, she's just come back from a, like, not yeah. like what. It's, I think if you watch the head on, too, to put it in just to, like a bit of context, is there was, at that stage of the day, there was sort of like a 35 to 45 kilometre wind blowing directly into their faces mm. as you're standing still, let alone if you're riding a horse 60 kilometres an hour into it. So, <laughs> I was, I could understand it. I don't think if you backed it, I backed that horse quite heavily. So you can tell how like much I believe what I'm saying because normally I'd be pretty angry. Uh, I, I don't reckon, think it changed I, the result. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon you'd be more angry if Growing Empire didn't do that. <laughs> oh, if Wonder Boy won, I'd probably be a little bit more angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like all I have to do is I just, I just look up at it. That's where my little ticket is. Yeah. Um, but makes yeah. me feel so good. Something to look forward to, you know. Like all the fathers out there, all last week, you know, just looking forward to Sunday. Well, at least on Sunday, I'm going to get to have a sleep in, and I might get some breakfast in bed. Well, a lot of the early crow family are just waiting for the cool more. Life's good. Uh, we're all over Growing Empire, Kieran Ma, Yulong, and Mark Zara. Um, we pray to God, Zeus, Allah, Bilbo Baggins. Um, Bobby Skilton, Liam and Noel Gallagher, that the horse remains sound and improves through its preparation and gets the job done on grand final day. Um, speaking of another superstar in the making, another will. No intent. No horse ran on all day except for one other. Um, it's a horse that has tactical speed, didn't need to use it. Its last two sectionals were sub 11 seconds. It's... It's sick in a way because we all took a fucking twelve and eleven dollars about here to shock who looked like it was just gonna mm. like you were just thinking, Oh come on, get past it. Get you're gonna get past oh no, what's oh, no, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I couldn't believe I was watching 
the, like the horses around it and in front, I'm going, it's got the fucking rest of this field covered. If he can just get past. And I said, what the yeah. fuck's... Who is this? Where are you come from? Another wheel. Get... And But that's the sick like, thing. It wasn't if you even, felt she like it fucking let go. Like, she's yeah, just I know. Like... But it felt like it came out of nowhere. And then you yeah. look at the sectionals. Or, hang on, it did. Yeah. Two sub-11 second sectionals. That's so rare. And it was almost oh. four bucks on Betfair too. Like... Mm. Yeah, Savage Drifter. Uh, the market had no idea on Saturday. More often than not. Where does that amazing. go, Dicko? Like, what distances and shit? 1,600. Ran in the Doncaster or something last year's favourite. Yeah, second favourite. Yeah, favourite. But for, do you reckon it gets further than that? No. Nah. No? Nah? No. Nah. If I owned it, I'd be probably aiming at the Turak. Um, I'd better not send it to the Epson. Pray for Tom Kitten. Was that last week's futures bet? No, nah, not last week's futures bet. Just a little. What was your futures bet on the captain's run, by the way? Uh, Jenny Mordabella in the Thousand Guineas. What even is that? Horse that ran at sale the same day as that renovation show. Ran some oh, all right numbers. Flary, man. Yeah, yeah. What price? 26s, something like that. Yep, and we just pray. And it's drifted since I've tipped it because of how well uh, Dom went. So we're, we're on fire. It hasn't drifted, but it wouldn't surprise me if it did. I, as I said, Dicko, too, there's a huge chance that I get my first collect from Futures this week when Dom doesn't nominate for the Caulfield and we get our cash back. Oh, look at him go. Just got to hope and pray. Just got to hope and pray. I threw in Riff, ro- I threw in riff Rocket. Uh, riff Corf- Rocket for the Caulfield Corf- Cup as well. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Like it. Mm. I think but, I know what I'm going to do on Thursday on the captain's front. Ooh. It's probably going to be our first, like a big stamper. And that's going to confirm a few things about another will. It's not another will. There's a horse that has yet to be seen this spring mm. that I really like the work of. So that'll be on Thursday on the captain's run. Back to another will. Where would you take it, perhaps? It's I'm weird, uh... like it had the Sydney prep and went pretty good. And then it kicks off in Melbourne. Mm. You think it's going to stay if I kick off here? Yeah, it would. It'd be interesting. Like, I'm not the best with like the races and when they are and the dates and the distances and shit. But geez, it just let down very nicely. Does it, because like does it even get does it get to two thousand or nah? Definitely not. Started off at first up fourteen hundred. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say they'll, they'll aim at a, like a two rack, a, a, a group one, four six hundred meter race. Yeah. Say it, say it won that. They're sort of stable. That just they, Kieran just keeps them going. Mm. Spaces their runs. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it pushed on to a big race over two thousand. Not a Cox Plate, but there's a lot of races for horses like that. At the back end of spring. And there's a lot of fallback options too that are worth good money. Um, I'll probably have a couple of our horses in them, so I hope it c- continues on its upward trajectory that <laughs> drop back into our lap. Um, it uh, it put a space on them up when it ran uh, the Rose Hill way, uh, the Sydney way of going in that. Uh, it was at the prelude? Doncaster Prelude, yeah, or Prelude or whatever it was. So it goes both ways. You just never know. He's that good at placing his horses. Yeah, and Drew White in the um, Doncaster. Yep. Um, SD three hundred and sixty. What about the great? Um, what about Craig? Craigie, Craigie boy. Unbelievable, unbelievable. New PB. May ground circled yep. him. Just super impressive horse. Yeah. Uh, really impressed with the trainers. Uh, Trent, Busted and Natalie Young. Is is he uh, got a few coming through at the moment? Like I've noticed, I've just I don't know, seen him a little bit more than usual. I reckon. So because you've been off... talking to Farjack and he gets talking yeah, about the males, or I don't know, but I just feel like I don't know. I've seen his name a bit more than usual. Just I don't. I it's that time that. of year that the, yeah. the big boys start to sort of come back, and they and the horses, the bigger, more confident trainers, and I think they're one of them. Yeah, um, true. They buy up, so you'd hope they have runners here. <sighs> He's special, this horse. I think. Like, what's not to like about him? It was uh market was interesting as well, Dico. It just it didn't it didn't drift, it didn't steam, it just it just hung that price. Hey, and they spat horses out all day, like yeah. good horses. Growing Empire, another will spat yeah. out, spat out. Um, 
If they didn't like one that was fresh, they spat them out. Seven, mm. seven and a half winners on Saturday at Caulfield. First up. That's a huge number. Yeah, unbelievable stuff, really. No winners, rails and run almost. Um, I think this horse is really, really, really good. Um, and you can tie him into to better races than this. When you, when you think about it, like, he's better than this great at race. And yeah. I should have seen this for what it was a bit more than I did. He started at dollar eighty five, a dollar fifty five in open three year old races for hundred fifty K and he drops back here to a benchmark seventy eight worth eighty thousand and they give you three forty. Um the open's a really good horse and a good measuring stick. A really nice animal, consistent. When it gets beat, it's often by a very nice horse. That um, didn't have much luck either, did it? That sat like three wide the trip, didn't it? Dodged a win though at the same time. So yeah, okay. I'm, like, yep. I don't think it was a bad ride, not yep. knocking the ride there. Um, it was a very tricky day tactically. Mm-hmm. You can also tie in um, Craig to Rise at Dawn. That's yeah. won again on Saturday Fucked in a much better tough. race. Jeez, how and... tough was that? Mm. Oh, yeah. Off Real the tough. canvas. Yeah. What, what you, if you're lucky enough to own a horse like Craig Dicko, if it was in Mailbag Budstock Silks, what would you be doing with it? Well, who uh, would you fall... rather, Craig or another Will? Craig. Craig. Ooh, don't Good hear question. that too many times. Good question. Craig. Craig. It's, it's, it's four-year-old. Shit. To race only. Racing only. Yeah, they're probably both geldings. They're geldings. Yeah. Craig's a four-year-old gelding, only, and another Will's a five-year-old gelding, so i got an extra year. It's one of those situations where if I liked, if I liked you, if we were negotiating, I'd say, you can pick. I'm happy with either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you would definitely take either home. Um... I, I really like Craig. So what are you doing with it? So what, just a good name as well. Like it's a fucking yeah. great, great, Quite strong name. name, Craig. Mm. <laughs> um, I, I'd I'd pick my way through. So it's it's carried fifty seven and a half in a benchmark seventy eight. So it'll go up a bit in ratings, but it won't go up significantly. And if you go up big time, which I think it's capable of for sure, once you win, your ratings there forever, and you can kind of miss mm. that prize money on the way up. And I think with the gelding, I'd just like to take it. But that's going to get very, very tempting for them. They'd be having you know, big conversations today because there is just a plethora, like just a, a buffet of options for that type of horse. So it's a 14 to 1600 meter horse. Does it get further? You know, there's all the country cups, like this, the Cranbourne Cups, the Seymour Cups. What about the Sir Rupert the, Clark right at the end of it because they moved yeah. that race low on the weights, 1400. No, that's, that's probably where I'd finish this preparation. Yep. If I was them. Yep. But I'd try and pick my way through it. Yep. Take all the prize running you can. Mm. Yep. Yep. Um, the group one, Memsies, was supposed to be Pride of Jenny versus Mr. Brightside. Um, it turned out to be uh, Pinstriped and the DJ Benny Allen versus the racing's greatest human being and Mr. Brightside and Craig Williams and Mr. Brightside. What was Jenna Monroy versus Pride of Jenny early and then one kept mm. going and one faded away. At a moderate clip though. It wasn't like Mark Zara used his horse to yep. chew up Pride of Jenny. She's gone yep. significantly faster than that previously. Uh, she'd gone significantly faster than that first up previously. Her last 200 metre sectional was disgraceful versus the day. Um, and I think there's a genuine concern about where yeah. she's at as a horse. I was going to say, like, you would have to be concerned. You like, they're saying no, uh, like, obviously not writing it off, but you'd be like, fuck, what, what's, what's, what's happened to it? I think that's a great way to put it, Tommy. We're not writing it off, but we're concerned. It's yeah. fucking concerning. Mm. The, like the horse's like last two hundred. The horse's <laughs> last two hundred was yeah, yeah exactly. No. Well, is it already in the race it wants to get to and it's just cruising and it's going to just turn on the afterburners at <laughs> the mm. start of September? I don't know. Um, it was the um, second slowest outside of Aegon like closing the race from the 1,000 home. It was 200 metre split. Last 200 was a 12.44. So to put that in context of the day, the 70... Uh, 84th fastest last 200. So she's run, she runs like 12 fours and 
similar numbers off the real brutal tempo she sets. So to do that off the slower tempo, which is still a really strong tempo, but it's slow for her. I think it's a real concern. Uh, I thought Mr. Brightside was enormous. Yeah, the only chink I'd have, but a very positive yard report from Peter for a preparation was like good condition. I, I just don't understand why, like if we own this horse, we're tagging pinstripes. Mm. This is our kickoff point, you know what I mean? And I'm not getting tagged by the, the, the race fit horse on us. Yeah, the, the, I don't, I, they weren't even worried about pinstripes at all, yeah. I think. Like it's, it was just, that's the, what it was. The, the narrative like, became mm. like the reality and it wasn't the case. Which not many people predicted, but like, the market didn't. Um, again, Pinstripe was like ten dollars out of sixteen dollars bet fair late. Uh, friendless gentleman Roy was steady. There was great, like good money. Antino, Antino was I thought really, really good versus the race after being slow away. Mm. I think Antino's in for a nice preparation. Um, Pinstripe that was like complete PR for a horse that has issues tactically early in a race. So I'd be very careful of it next time. Um, happy for the connections well done congratulations uh, and Mr Brightside trusting Pete's yard report but it's kind of irrelevant for us because the price we're going to get offered next time it goes around will be mm. very very short and um, we won't be playing that's what I found interesting with Pinstripe well, a... it was $7 versus $5 last time Gentleman Roy when Gentleman Roy beat it and it was $8 versus 16 here. I found that I found that interesting from the market yeah I actually like slapped myself on the wrist about that on th- on Sunday. I missed that, and that was a relevant piece of information. But I didn't hit myself too hard because it wouldn't actually change the price yeah. that much. But I did miss that. Um, so the SP profile said that it was you know closer to Roy. Yeah. And and the market on Saturday reacted to the result of that race last time they met, where Gentleman Roy won. So yeah. I don't know. I think, Gentleman Roy, that's its ceiling. So you can trust that number as the best it's got in its locker. Um, great ride, Zara. Brightside's on track to do whatever it wants. See, their whole preparation, too, leading into this, was all about, like, oh, let's avoid prior to Jenny where we can. Mm. That's kind of like the Swans worrying about what the fucking Hawks are doing this weekend. I don't think anyone's worried about... It'll be interesting now, won't it? If they're yeah. worried about prior to Jenny. I think... The, like once Vera Sestina comes down, and I, I think that this will... week isn't it? Yeah, it's Maccabi Diva. Uh, next no, 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 next week, two weeks. Yeah, sorry, J Mac booked. Yeah, J Mac on coming down. Jolly Star and another one. Yeah, uh, like I. Oh, what, what's that? It's going to be interesting now. Oh, like Vera Sestina looks very, very hard to beat this prep. Perhaps what about uh, going to? Sydney, what about how fucking well Autumn Glow won? Mm. Was that that uh, defied a bit of the pattern of the day, or no? Got... Like, uh, I sort of was. It actually played pretty fairly um, the track. I think like you obviously never really want to be worse than midfield anyway. Um, yep. But it was a lot on tempo of the okay. races, the way they were run. Looking back at the data and stuff like that. Um, through leaders won. Um, so they had their chance with on pretty slowish tempos, um, but I think early in the day it was definitely more advantageous to be forward than than um, like midfieldish. It sort of slowly um, even itself comes just out. off off pace midfieldish, and then when the if the tempo suited, um, the the ones from the back would come come and run on. Um, so it was a good day's racing. A couple of, go through a few here. Um, where should we start? We sort of touched on Storm Boy. Um, I'll just uh, get it up here. The horse, while you're looking that up, the horse that beat another will in the Doncaster, Celestial Legend. Mm. Karen stays in Sydney to ride it that- and Jolly Star, while while uh, J Mac, both our men, J Mac comes south to Victoria to ride via Sestina. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be flat. It won't be able to. Watched on Saturday, three twenty games uh, flattening, but I'll be watching the replays. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, on Autumn Glow, if you watch its races, I think you can see to the eye like the last 
200 really gets going over 1300 meters. So I reckon furthers furthers the goal, and I think that's been talked about a bit. How far how far does it get out to? Is a interesting one. Like, does it um, go to the Golden Golden? Which one is it, Dicko? Golden Rose, but Golden she's Rose. a filly. She she can go to anything. She can yeah. go to like thousand guineas. Hopefully not for Pratty's bet. Yeah, um, like it's it did it, it did it pretty easy. It, it, it sort of was suited a little bit. Um, with the race shape, was they were pretty pretty hard early, so it was probably in the sweet spot. But um, for that race, but geez, it did do it nicely. Didn't really whip it, like sort of said, get going. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting horse, I think. I'm but sure. The I've sectionals heard what I are just the sectionals are just like so strong. Yeah. But like this is why, um, like to another Will's credit, right? See how good she's gone. They're eleven thirty six, eleven two two, eleven four six, whereas mm. he was two in a row sub eleven. Mm. Now she's a three-year-old filly by the Autumn Sun. So the Autumn Sun, as a stallion, right. was a faster stamped, run race. Stamped though. him in in the Oaks this year. So like he had fillies winning and running well in Oaks. So the the lean from a pedigree would be that this horse is going to get a lot further. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think one from the race you can keep an eye on is an Iron Hawk went back to last, went to the rails, and then. Um, really hit the line well. I think you can get over further. It's a good horse. It's sort of done that a couple of starts, so I might have the tendency to just get back and run on, but I think it's a nice horse going forward. Um, Snack Bar, our first start was really good. Um, sort of peaked on the run. I think Autumn Glow sort of um, first, Autumn Glow sort of just kicked away. It sort of looked like it was going to um, run over the top, probably with 250, 300 to go, but then Autumn Glow's um, turn of foot sort of kicked in the gear, but I think that looks like it's come back pretty well. Um, what about Seal Wolf? Seal Wolf. Shale, Shale Wolf. Shale Wolf. Oh, let's go to um, race eight, number five, if you're looking for it at home. It's unfortunate because yeah. some of the owners are some of my good friends, so they're going to be really angry about me not knowing how to say their horse's name. I thought it was an enormous win. J-Mac um, sort of throttled down a just, little bit, I thought. Just a good J-Mac ride. It was, mm. it was, a, it was a slowly ran race. Um, and Can I say something about the ride? I love what do you reckon he does when he's on these sort of horses and he's going like I wonder how good this thing is because I need to make some big decisions mm. he just sort of asks them to he presents them just maybe 100 200 metres earlier than he might have just to yeah. get to like the truth like what have you got what sort of tank have we, oh, well, am I dealing with here because in three weeks time I'm going to have to decide if I go with you or there's other six horses in this better race exactly yeah I think he's also sick of uh, he's. I think he was sitting there all day, and he's like, "I'm sick of sitting here all day. I'm going to get out early and get going on this thing because it does get over further as well. Like it's around over twenty twenty four hundred. Um, so it's it's in for a good prep, Chow Wolf. I think Joey Pry was afterwards was pretty. You could see he was pretty chuffed with it. He's got a lot of options now. Showed a good turn of foot over fifteen hundred. Um, not sure where it goes, but it's in for a good prep. Um, or else been... we. It's been backed in the Metrop. The Metrop, right. Yeah. <laughs> Chao Wolf was elite and is a very, very nice horse. But there's another one out of this, out of the race, Dicko, that she's... You, if you, if uh, I was watching the replays today, Berkshire Shadow held up something shocking, like just sick. Went back to last, uh, not suited at all. Um, once it got out in the straight, which is very late, probably the last 250, it's ran the fastest um, 100 and 200 of the race, ninth fastest last 200 of the day, third f- fastest last 100. This is this is without having any momentum up the straight, by the way. <laughs> um, it's second prep is this prep in Australia. So usually they've improved a lot in that second prep. Had horrific barrier draws its whole whole uh, career except for its first up run in Victoria where it drew one and landed forward so it can land forward I'm happy to follow this um, wherever it goes it had Zach Waddick on it um, no disrespect but he's a three kilo claimer and he goes at 10% and goes yeah so um, happy and really keen to follow Berkshire's shadow wherever it goes um, obviously price dependent but it's 
Jeez, it looks a it looks a really oh, nice bet if you can geez, do a Jeez, the barrier. way you've spoken then, anything above a dollar fifty next start sounds. Oh, like I know a this bet. horse. It, it it started real short versus Von Hawk. Oh, not short, but like there was good money for it. Von Hawk and Menable. Yeah. Remember, Pratty, first up, Group Invi- Three Flemington, right? Yeah. Yep. Then it got then it ran into Celestial Le- <laughs> Celestial Legend Heavy. and Doncaster and Pericles and all them. Then Just the poor folk. bloke. Then the poor bloke went to Hawkesbury. He went one on one with a great one and got his head punched in by Just Folk. That's grass form. Back last. It's back last every time. And it's got horrific barriers. It just needs to draw like half decent, and it can push forward with a good jockey on it. Like it's. I'm really keen. I'm can't wait um, to find out where it goes. Because um, I'm keen. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Love it. So that's what that's one I'm keen on. The other Berkshire, probably Shire Shadow. Uh Kiramar trains. That's Tommy's like very, very lead in the pencil black booker. Mm. There's the uh another one is Tropicus out of uh oh, what race is that? Sorry. Race six. Race that's six. Out of, that's out of Storm Boys San race. Domenico. Yeah, out of Storm Boys race. Um was back last, miles back, hooned home. Um Fast as everything they're meeting. Um, second start as a three-year-old. Uh, like first up, second start of um, its whole career. That's going to be uh, one to watch if it can draw better. Um, what price this horse, the Coolmore? It, it, this horse absolutely pissed in and was well-backed at Caulfield on debut. Mm. And they said after the race... We're put away, eh? Put away for the Coolmore. And given mm. that we're on it, you know, twenty one plus dollars already, about the six dollar chance, potentially if they've missed this one, Pratty. They mm. might have completely missed it by my eyes. I don't even think it is in the market. Lady of Camelot Coleman, it is not in the market, Dicko. Really? At the place that I'm looking at. Not in the market. Okay. Because I think it, I don't know where it goes, but it, geez, it was a good run. It's, uh, it's absolutely hooned home. But it's the last 600 a little, a, minus 11 average. And a little bit of money for it, Tommy. 21 in a 17. Mm. Oh, it's last 600 is huge. Last, like, for everything. Um, the last 800 last... is fat. 1080, 10, 10, Mm. Eleven one six, like holy fuck! I yeah. have found it. It's not in the blue agency, but it's on the green cafe at twenty six dollars. Jeez, the cool one. It's not a gift, is it? It's not a gift. Nah. So I'm gonna keep cool. an eye on though. Certainly, something to build a position on. Probably. It's flopped Certainly out the back. It's miles probably. off them. Drew the widest. Anthony and Sam, they know how to get a job done. They are big boy trainers. Yep. Uh, what else took your eye there at uh, in Sydney on the weekend? Uh, right? First light was a really nice run. Um, worse the midfield, not suited. Hit the line very well. J-Mac was on. Um, so while I was expecting this thing to um, really go, it was sort of a weird sort of setup. Like was snicked at the trials and then like snicked last start and then it turned home here. It's going to be better over further, 2,400. Um, that's one to keep an eye on where it goes next start. Um, Wana, Wana, Wana Nura? Is that how you say it? Wana Nura? Um, outside leader um, in the Autumn Glows race. Um, not suited at all. Axius, who led, um, dropped 10 lengths last, um, and he's hung on for second. So there's a good sort of reference to you and Axis was in the market expected to run well so um, Wanarua suited next start in front could uh, run a nice race there's a big day for the RSLs there at Rose Hill just noticing that eh? Like race 2 the Maryland's RSL club race 4 the Catholic Campbelltown Catholic club race Smithfield five, race 6 the Cabra Vale Diggers club race <laughs> 6 the Smithfield RSL San Domenico Stakes CM NL, don't know what that is, but that was the up-and-coming stakes. The Bankstown Sports, Benchmark 100. The Mounties Group, I think that's a club as well. And then Clubs, New South Wales, finish it off. 
fuck Maybe there's just I've nothing no that gets past I'd... you, hey. There's just absolutely nothing that gets past you. I've got no doubt that there was a couple of, uh, you know, club employees that would have had a big day in a box at Rose Hill there on Saturday. Yeah. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> they've, just, they've done everything but the Tab Highway and the Midway, which I don't think they can sponsor. So, uh, shout out to the RSLs. Um... Righto, Black Bookers. What? Um, mine obviously the biggest one one of my biggest ever black book was Berkshire Shadow um, yeah I've just put this one down it hopefully it doesn't go to a race that's over the top but Berkshire Shadow put it in your black book and hope it draws a gate because I think it will go very very close to winning one Anura is the other one Tropicus and First Light they're the sort of four I want to be following out of the meeting Big day at Caulfield's. Plenty I could sort of throw out there, but the two that I'll stamp a little bit wider, I think you get a price next start. Gold Wolf, four-year-old Stayer, and Berkeley Square. Um, my man and our man, and your man too, guys, if you're listening at home, El Bowles, hockey fame, um, spewing in front of his mum on Saturday and having to hose it off the, the garden on Saturday morning fame. He's been so big on Berkeley Square since before it got to the races. And I think the love affair shall continue because there mm-hmm. was an enormous return there on Saturday in another wheel race. So uh, shout out to Lindsay. Hope you're feeling better, mate. Um, that's been the Early Crow episode 48 brought to you by Makita. Have a phenomenal week. We'll see you on Thursday afternoon or Friday morning for our captain's run as we warm up for... A huge weekend of racing and sport. Bye for now.